Hey guys. So I'm um, on 10 3 2023 at 9 11 in the morning. I got this. It's called His Communication. And there's two sections answers hidden and changes unseen. And then there's some charts and stuff I'm going to go through after that I was told to do. And that's why it's taken so long to get this out because I had to do this project at the end. So um, I believe the time I got this 9 11 relates to Psalm 91 1. And uh, let's start with number one answers hidden. The answers are hidden. No one considers to look. I have hidden my answers in my word, yet no one considers to dig. If you have hidden my words in your heart, Psalm 119, 11, I can bring those words back up to you to point out the answers. But those who do not store my words, I cannot share the truths. I have said repeatedly through my word and through my true prophets to read my words. I see how few have done this. A simple request to be done in faith with a huge benefit that is not told. Why don't I say the benefit? Because I want to see who truly has faith and obeys my words. This has always been. My true church obeys the simple things I say and unexpected benefits result. Now I'm supposed to read for you Psalm 119.11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And then it goes back into his words. My true church knows this is true. Something occurs, a choice to be made. It may be a small choice to go with the crowd in gossip or to say, no, I'm not taking part. Those that read my words, scriptures bubble up within them. I ring in their ears with things like not malicious gossips, but temperate. And now I'm supposed to read for you 1 Timothy 3.11. Women must likewise be dignified, not malicious gossips, but temperate, faithful in all things. So the concept is the entire verse is in your brain but God just pulls out little pieces to remind you at the time needed their hearts then convicted this is how I work I do not use the whole verse I do not quote the book but to the one who hears the words rise up from within they know the correct path because my words have reminded I will use this much in the next months of sorrows only those who read my words will have this guidance. Only those who follow the conviction of heart and act correctly will get more guidance. From time to time, I use pastor's words or lyrics from worship songs to do the same. When you take in purity, I can guide the words to guide you. When you take in purity, I can guide the words to guide you. When you take in filth, it deadens your ears to hear me. Those of you waiting to hear from me, many of you have likely been experiencing this bubbling up within you to guide you without understanding that it is from me. It is time to acknowledge this. My voice is the still, peaceful voice. Hear when I speak, listen when I guide, move when I convict. I have said before, those who hear me to prepare the church will have a closer connection and hear me differently with longer sessions and more words. This is because they are leading, but I will indeed speak in an audible voice at the time to even you. No matter how I choose to guide you, listen. The time approaches. Those who have caution will see. The world will see. Some of you will have dreams that warn or that show events. When these events begin occurring, the dreams will come back to you for helping you know if you are on the proper path or what to do next. See that your success is preloaded into your mind. Some of you will receive words more similar to the ones you hear currently from the one before you. You will write these words down in a paper book and they will guide you in the future. Each way I communicate, you should take note of and write the words or guidance in a paper book. The collecting of these things will help you. At times, the collection of words will be shared with others 
who also have books. Trust me fully. I will speak. I hear your prayers. Many are concerned they will not hear. I will ring my words in your ears, mind, or loop your dreams until you hear. You write it and you follow it. See that I tell you before it will occur because I care for you. I want only good for you. Lean into me. I am safety. I am stability. I am here for you. Now I'm supposed to read these two verses for you. Job 33, 14 through 16. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Isaiah thirty twenty one, Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Number two, changes. This week, things change in the unseen. They will not seem to change in the physical. I will take note of who are faithful when life lacks the horrors. These events are coming. Then we will see who believes. Wait and see. This year, everything changes, nothing to return to normal, nothing. So many have guessed over the years of where the shifts would be. This has caused a dullness of hearing by the world and by the church. Note that my true prophets agree. When it all unfurls, who was true will be laid bare, for they will be gone and they will be found accurate. This will rock the world. No one believes that there are true prophets in your day. The world sees this as a possibility for the past, but not in the present. Those who are faithful and here to be my examples during sorrows, when electricity is working, which will be at different times in different places, encourage people to download PDFs of the true prophets and listen to their words. All those taken and gone need to be heard. Do not defend, do not argue, just show my proof that all of these things were foretold. In your generation, I have had many true prophets come and go. None with the full understanding of what is to come. This is strategic. But in times past, I have had prophets hear of what you hear of now. But now, since it is the generation to prepare and act, the words have been given with more meaning, more specific directives, more directions, more hope. Why? For you are the ones who will live through it and you need more specifics. I have led Julie to use her interpretation gift to have full understanding of a prophet she never knew existed until a few weeks ago. He was alive in her lifetime, but she was never exposed to him. She learned of his prophecies and looked into his words with caution. Under my guidance, she saw that he did not have a full understanding of what he was given, but she knew instantly while reading them what they meant and that they were the very words she was hearing from me, although more vague and for a slightly different time, so the language differs. Here, I was told to give you an overview of Dimitru Dudeman and how his prophecies parallel and as well as how I became introduced to him, okay? So a few weeks back, Nick, who's on my team and I have the deepest respect for him, I think he is very wise, he was telling me of this prophet from the 80s and 90s who was called the Prophet to America. And he left me a YouTube link and I'm not supposed to watch stuff on YouTube. So I was like very cautious, like, well, I'm gonna like research who this guy is, but I'm very cautious about it. And um, I decided, I while in the process of trying to figure out who he was, I found his entire bunch of prophecies that were uploaded into a downloadable link for it was a book that he had written with all of his collection of prophecies. And so I downloaded it, stuck it on my desktop of my laptop. And I was like, I'm going to pray about this. I'm not even going to read this. I'm just going to pray about it and see if I need to read this. 
So um, I often have what's called a meeting with God. It's, it feels like I'm meeting with a CEO of a huge company or something, and I just pretty much take notes, and once in a while I get to ask a question, but it, there's an agenda to it, and there's things that I'm told to do in my everyday life or for the YouTube thing or for something in the future, okay? And I'm given information about stuff that's like a lot of uh, unique information, okay? So in my meeting with God, um, after I had this PDF, but I hadn't read it, um, this is what I was told. I was told to read the document and see what I find. So I read the entire thing in one day, and then I was just jaw dropped. I couldn't put it down because as I was reading it and I'm looking at my interpretation gift, I was like, oh, that means this. And that means this. Oh my gosh, that's the same thing I was told. And, um, this information just kind of like blew me away because he was saying the exact thing I'm saying, just completely more veiled, more, more mysterious. Okay. So, um, I was reading these words, undoing the uncoding and everything. And it was kind of interesting to me to even do that. But then some of his stuff had more information than we have. And some of his stuff had less information and my stuff filled in his. So it was almost like they were designed to be a puzzle put together. Okay. Um, it comforted me very much because I don't know anyone in my shoes. And as I read his story and some of the questions he had and some of the interactions he had with his angels, because I have interactions with mine, it gave me a lot of comfort to see another person in this position um, and kind of their plight, what they go through, because it's very similar, okay? It gave me a lot of boldness. Like, I totally believe everything I'm putting out here, but it's all new information to me, and this whole entire process of being used this way is very new to me. So it's kind of like to know another person that's kind of been through this process with this kind of bold information was very soothing to me. It's like, okay, there's someone else in my corner, okay? And it did surprise me. I'm like, this guy's like from my lifetime. Like, I never heard of him, ever. Prophet to America, who heard of him, you know? So, um, anyway, one thing that struck me was the urgency he had, because he really did not understand that it wasn't in his lifetime. Every, all the words given to him were like, right now, this is going to happen. Go save everybody. And that's kind of the urgency I always feel. It's like, now, get it out, go tell, you know? Anyway, so as I'm done, as I finish reading all this stuff and I've, I've marked up my document, you know, like crazy, then I was like, I feel like I need to make a chart of this. So I started making a chart and I was kind of ignoring my team because I'm in the middle of this, this project. And when I get head down working on a project, I just kind of like disappear off the earth. <laughs> I do not answer texts. I don't, I'm really bad, but I just am like laser focused. So finally, Mary gets through to me. She's on my team and she's like, you know, what have you been doing and whatever. So I'm trying to tell her and I feel struck that I need to craft this chart to help her understand his prophecies with mine because I'm not 100% sure that she would completely understand all the symbology that he had been given and how it relates perfectly to mine. So I was working on this kind of like OCD, like just constant. And I was also getting all these words from the Lord to give out to you guys. This is a few weeks back. And I was also doing um, a lot of stuff with my personal life. And I was having some health issues. Um, and I was having a lot of demonic fighting and attack. Like I was just in prayer constant. So I finally said in the next meeting with the Lord, I said, okay, I'm spending all this time on this chart. Should I just, you know, forget this? Because... Perhaps I'm being OCD about it, but maybe I don't need to be. Maybe it's a waste of time. So, you know, give me some insight on that. So this is what I was told. And this is the direct quote from my meeting. Yes, continue the Dimitru project. You are seeing the truth that all I say has been said for a while. You stand alone now, but you do not stand alone. See that I have prepared the way before you with others who also obey. I urged Nick to send you the initial Dimitru so you would discover the truths as you have to bring confidence to the fact that I have prepared others with the same words, bringing full confidence to that what you hear is accurate. One reason you have not been able to listen to others is to hear clearly, but another is so no mixing occurs of my words 
with that of the false ones. The blessing is that when you were almost done, that I could send further proof to you from modern prophets that reinforce my words to you in this very time. I knew you would reject man's words and be suspect of any prophecies, so I knew you would not pursue them on your own or be exposed to them. But now that you have been obedient, I am bringing them forward in proof. Okay, so if you have interest to see what I have found that parallels between Dimitri Dudeman and myself, what I've been given in dreams and prophecies, um, and some of it isn't even stuff I've shared on YouTube. I just haven't been called to, but it does overlap. Um, I'm going to pursue um, just going through some charts that I made of a timeline that we um, kind of share information on. And there's another um, bunch of charts that kind of parallel the dreams. The one thing that really baffled me is there were some dreams where we had on identical dates of the year. Sure, it was like two or three decades apart. But the same day of the year, we got dreams about the same or very similar topics, which I think is very fascinating. Okay, so Dimitri Dudeman was a Romanian preacher. He was in jail so many times in Romania for sharing the gospel that gave him the option to be extradited to the United States. Um, he begins his book with this, Ezekiel three seventeen to 21. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them a warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak or warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not give warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he surely live because he took warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. So, um, I highly encourage you to read Dimitri's original words, and I will have a link and PDF that you could print out. And I will also have these PDFs that are the charts. I'm not going to go through the full entire charts because there's just not enough time, okay? But I am going to go ahead and give you some uh, links so that if you have interest in this, you can go through it. I think you will have interest in the basic timeline information, so I'm gonna try and go through that fairly detailed. The one thing I can tell you is Dimitri's stuff is kind of like the Cliff Notes, and mine is kind of like War and Peace. His is very brief. You can seriously read it in a day. On the chart, I have details that help understand what the symbology means. So if you pre-read that, when you read it, it'd be much quicker, okay? Um, I'm supposed to read for you Amos 3, 7 through 8. Surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Okay, so let's get into it. Here's some symbology that might help you, okay? So um, every time he talks about a star, that represents the United States. Every time he talks about a bear, that's Russia. The dragon is China. Um, Satan happens to work through all these different things. And in this process, it says like Satan does this or Satan rides that. When he's riding a thing, that means he's causing that thing to occur. Okay. So he, if Satan is riding the bear, Satan is causing Russia to do something for his purposes. When you say USA burns every single time for him, it means that there are nuclear bombs and that's how it burns. Okay. Okay. So this is the overview of the basic chart. Okay. He has 43 different prophecies or visions or words, okay, that he shares. 
his thing on this particular chart, and I'm not going to read through this all the way. I'm going to explain what it is so that if you want to pursue it, you can look into it. So we're going to look at the first one just to get an idea. It goes across with numbering his prophecy, what date he was given. The original title he has is darker and the lighter is the topic that we're more familiar with hearing. So his title for this one is America Will Burn. And I say the U.S. is bombed. And then there's also a timeline in there. So if you need a quick reference to try and find, oh, where was that one with the timeline? You can go back and find that more easily than rereading the entire chart. Okay. Then the topics covered, I do a summary. His are longer and they're in paragraph form and they're in like more of a, um, picture kind of format because they're very um, dream sense where like words are, have symbology. But I've broken it down into just the basics of it. So in this one, the USA burns because Sodom and Gomorrah. So basically their impurity. Then he has four things that happen. The middle of the country has an uprising. Does that sound familiar anyone? Okay. Number two, the US government is busy with internal problems. Clearly the truth. Number three, the U.S. goes into war with China. And then number four, Russia and associated uh, warrior friends, okay, they bomb the nuclear storehouses in America as a surprise attack. Well, supposedly. Okay, why? Why is this occurring? Because of pluralism. Because we've allowed people to be like, well, you can do whatever you want. You can think whatever you want. You can worship whoever you want. That's why. Okay, then there's a timeline in there. The U.S. will be disabled, Israel will be attacked, and they will turn to the false Messiah. Then Jesus returns and takes the church um, to heaven, and then Armageddon. Now, obviously, that's a very large time span, because we know Armageddon is like at year seven, and we know the U.S. disabled is at year negative one, like before actually the tribulation. And... So there's things in there where there's time gaps, okay? This is how some of our stuff mixes because he has information and then my information fits in like a puzzle in between, okay? Now on mine, I have on the next section, twin topic. So meaning I've been given information on the same exact stuff. So what is it? I have that I've had a dream I've never shared, but there's submarines that come to the East Coast and they um, are run by China and two other countries and they send bombs into the land, but they have specific strategic AI directed locations that they are bombing. And some of them are actually not even real bombs, but within the building, the building is set and rigged to blow up. So it looks like they were bombed. And all of it is strategic because there are places that the um, world government wants to rebuild in the way they wish to rebuild it. So they're gonna annihilate churches and places that they want to use as uh, the places where everyone will live in the new cities, okay? Then there's um, the human uprising. He talks about that. And then bombs drop. I've got November, bombs drop. Or then I've got um, China, Russia, etc. invade the U.S. like in November or fall, right? And near Christmas. Now, then I've got a twin date. On this particular one, I did not have a dream that matched his date because he doesn't really have a date. He had nine something 1984. He didn't write it down, which I get totally because when I first started getting stuff, I didn't write the date down. But after I got so many, I was like, I got to write the date down because this might matter. But then in the Bible, I have verses that support that these things will occur. So um, I am going to put this chart at the end kind of like scan through them with some music um if you're not you know you don't have the accessibility to do a pdf or whatever you need to do so you can screenshot them and take a look or you can go through it especially slowly whatever works for you okay so that's the first chart now the second chart this one we're gonna do in a much more detail because it's a timeline now let's talk again about timelines God's time is not our time. I've been given some stuff that has months and dates attached to it. That does not mean it relates to our calendar. Remember, the timeline information given is for pacing. Okay? So if you know something's supposed to happen in October, and then something else is supposed to happen in November, and something else is supposed to happen in December, that's the pace at which it happens. But when it starts, that's when you know what the date is in God's time. Okay. 
Also, there are times where these events that might seem like they're in the very same month, like, oh, October, October, those could be a year apart. Those could be two years apart. There's stuff where the language suggests there might be time in between that darkness and when the Mark of the Beast comes out, there might be time in there where that's longer than three months. It might be a year and three months, okay? So we just need to be flexible and understand that this is not like, oh, this is the actual date, everything's gonna happen and whatever. Okay, that, that's not what we're doing here, okay? I'm only putting the dates in because I was given the dates. I don't care when it happens. I just wanna get off this planet, okay? So, I'm trying to tell you where this stuff matches, stay loose with the dates. The dates are not important. What's important is what happens first, second, and third. And as you see these things occur, you can know what happens next. Okay, you can know what to expect. There are some things on this chart that I don't know exactly where they fit. I know they're under something and before something, but I don't know exactly where they fit, so I highlight them in yellow. That way, you can go, okay, this might occur here or here. When you see it happen, you'll know, okay? Um, there are some things that are solid, set in stone. They have to go before or after a thing because of the way it's been given to me or, or the way it's been given to him, okay? So I'm gonna go through this. You just have to stay really chill about dates and times and be flexible, understanding that you don't understand the times, okay? All right, so everything that he has given, he was given stuff from 1984 to 1997, okay? Everything he was given is written in red. Everything I was given is written in black, okay? Anything highlighted, it's not perfectly clear where it goes in order, okay? There are some shorthand notes you might wanna take note of. I've got PPM, which is the protection, provisions, and miracles that will happen for all the faithful. I have OF, which means obedient faithful. Those are the people leading on the ground for the church. I've got UNR, okay, because unrighteousness is such a long word. I can't squeeze it in the middle of all this stuff. Then we've got OTW on the way. Then I have some people and things, which is FM is false messiah. AC is antichrist. FP is false prophet, AI is artificial intelligence. Now on the left, I have world events and on the right, I have church and spiritual events. So I tried to break it up into large chunks. So I've got pre-sorrows, sorrows, the great tribulation and the thousand year reign. Thousand year reign is kind of like the bumper. I didn't like put all the stuff that's gonna happen in there because it doesn't matter. We just need to get you know, over the hump. Okay, so Demetra calls it day one. I call it pre-sorrows. In the world events, what happens in pre-sorrows is the lawless one is prepared and ready. And that was in 1997. He was prepared and ready then to reveal with lies and deceptions. Now on the spiritual side, in the same pre-sorrows section, I got December 9th, 1923 was the date that the U.S. began to walk away from God. Um, I got the sorting of the church which is a big section, um, the church is sorted. The wheat versus the tares in September with three dramatic man-planned events. Darkness rises September 29th. The church is sorted by October 8th. Remember, that may not be our calendar dates. He got Lucifer goes to war versus the true Christians that have a clean life beginning in earnest in 1990s. Lucifer uses passive, deceptive tactics. Lucifer will destroy some, make some prisoners in chains. He will, just, he will attack until the end. All attacks will be on true Christians. And it was a warning that the churches were fraudulent. Then my warning of, of season of extremes beginning 6, 27, 23. Um, he got powerful storms and floods and earthquakes will occur before wrath. People will still not wake up. And this was given in a dream. It had a moon and then seven moons came out of it. So to me, that might be seven months worth of extreme weather. Six plus seven is 13. So that's January 2024 might be the end of that very extreme like warning weather. There's going to be judgment weather. That's a whole nother thing. Okay, going down to sorrows. And sorry, for day two, 
he calls it sorrows and then tribulation, what I call tribulation. Both of those are day two to him, okay? Because there's trials that people have to get through. So I've got Trump-related troubles. And then he has, there's an uprising in the middle of the country. And the U.S. government is in internal trouble. I have, there's lights in the sky and false alien narrative that's related to the false messiah. There's a planned power outage and people freak out. Okay, the lights in the sky kick it off. Then um, I have, there's a human uprising, global chaos, riots, and evil. He has, people are in a frenzy. At the same exact time, on the spiritual and church side, I have darkness overtakes unrighteous people. He has, there's turmoil outside of his house. And letters to the U.S. churches were delivered to him in scrolls. There was a black cloud. You know, we always hear that there's darkness is approaching. There was a black cloud, days of sadness. The whole world was covered in this darkness. The darkness in his is explained to be Satan's army from the deep. Demons, straight up. The praying people, the cloud around them disappears. So they have a covering where the darkness and the demons cannot touch the praying people. It disappears and they are safe and they are continually given strength. Now, I've got the human uprising. He has turmoil outside. There's another dream with the U.S. churches were delivered and a red cloud appears. So a warning, right? Get up. Don't be defeated by the enemy. Cry out to God that he might save you. Tell the people to pray and repent. Days are shortened because of sin. Repent. Days are numbered. So he's told what you're supposed to be doing when all of this is occurring, okay? I have in the spiritual, the anointed kick off miracles after the chaos starts and leave soon after the false Messiah is revealed before bombs drop. A door opens in heaven in October. That's what I was told. He has a ski lift takes those on the narrow path to skip the war. Then he has what's called the day of vengeance. And this might be possibly a year because it says the day, okay? And sometimes a day is just like a period of time because we see everything from the 90s all the way to now is a day or it could be a year prophetically. So we can't assume what a day means, okay? This is what happens on the day of vengeance. Um, punishment for the church. Preachers, prophets, singers, workers who did acts for their own glory. Liars, imposters, coveters, form of godliness, but not but denying his power. Judgment, then judge the whole world. Those who are meek are protected because they forsake evil, coveting, pride. They weep and worship and ask for help. They worship in spirit and truth. No army can stand against the meek. Now, it has been explained in other, other pieces that the war that comes to the United States this is that day of vengeance. This is when the church is visibly sorted. The church will already be sorted by October 8th in God's time. Okay. But the, the physical, everyone can see who was spared and who wasn't. That happens because of the day of vengeance, which he explains in the world events is war. The first war, what I call war one. Okay. Okay. He has four kings versus the U.S. with heavy artillery. Okay, I have the U.S. invasion. Bombs fall from planes. It's four to six weeks. It could be years because weeks can be years prophetically. We can't assume that it's actual weeks, but it probably is. Okay. Um, he has U.S. versus China and Lucifer's riding the dragon. Lucifer's, Lucifer's the one who is making China do it, okay? U.S. bombs their own people stealthily with atom bombs. The bombs are the day of vengeance beginning. Now, I have that Washington, Louisiana, Florida, Virginia, Ohio, Texas, and the middle of the U.S. are attacked, invaded during this war. I know other people have other states. That's only what I've been shown, and that's only what I'm putting here. But he has, when China is at war with the United States, Russia will do a surprise attack. Russia penetrates via Alaska, Minnesota, and Florida, 
and Russia delivers the land and the people of the U.S. to China, which is supported because I had words that showed that we would be surrounded by China and we would belong to them. He also has another thing about um, Russia that says the bear seemed dead, but he came back to life with vengeance and a purpose. In another um, dream, I had Mexico, China, and one other attack us or are invading. He has that Taiwan has to be free of the United States. China attacks the U.S. from behind and two other countries attack with Russia and Russia bombs our nuclear storehouses. The U.S. is disabled. He also points out that the U.S. is Babylon and why and that we are destroyed. At the time we are destroyed, right after that, Israel is attacked and turns to the false messiah. Now he points out that Mexico and Cuba are the two countries that help Russia. And there's three consecutive years of massacre in the United States after the day of vengeance begins. Now we've got the spiritual that happens at the same time, still within this day of vengeance, okay? I had in mind that the rapture was two to three weeks after the end of the first war. Remember there it goes war one, false peace. You have to choose between God or the false Messiah. Then you've got the rapture, right? That's the basic structure. After the end of the first war, two to three weeks later, is the rapture. He has that God blinds the eyes of those that trample Jesus' sacrifice so that they are unprepared until the day Russia strikes the U.S. The holy will be alerted by God with open eyes that it is on the way. You who have already decided, yeah, this is important. I need to dial into this. You're, you're in the holy. You're already being awakened at this time, the time of the bombing, because the anointed leave before the bombing, then the vengeance is going to kick off and bombing is going to occur, right? At the time of the bombing, the obedient faithful hear God's voice. Now they're going to be protected. They're going to be the ones doing the miracles publicly. They're going to be the ones provided for, right? And they are going to hear God and obey and do whatever so they're continually safe. Okay, he has, at the appointed time, I will speak to them, guided by God's words and protected. So I have the obedient faithful have protections, provisions, and miracles through the sorrows and are a witness to the half-borns. Uh, they shine with the Holy Spirit. They're spared the nukes like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So if you're in an area where you know nuclear storehouses are and they're going to be nuked, you'll be just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, perfectly fine in the flames. Doesn't matter. Your, your place is going to be standing. You're going to be fine if you're holy and you're praying and doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. Then the obedient faithful will lead the second Pentecost and see many wonders. This is what he has. The holy are spared wrath, given joy. Names are in, in the book circled for extra protection they're saved out of the fire a powerful light surrounds the righteous and it didn't fit here but those are the ones who are spreading the gospel um, protection and works of God are unimaginable these are the wonders okay I have the unrighteous are not spared consequences he has the names will replace mockers he has a book where it has all the names in the Lamb's book of life but it says that the names will replace mockers. Those that tested grace will have no escape, no protections. And the godly versus the ungodly will be evident. Why will it be evident? Because this house will be wrecked, even though they say they're a Christian. Or they, oh, I go to church. But it will be totally burned. And they'll lose all their stuff. And then this person, who's actually holy, will just have this, like, amazing, oh, I'm, I'm doing good. I have water, too. Want some? You know. Okay, now back to the world events, the next kind of chunk of time. My information, post-war one, false peace. The dollar value drops in the false peace. Trump promotes the false messiah. The false messiah offers Lincoln-like solutions. The wealthy offer small businesses money and they're appearing generous, but it's a huge trap. Um, there's a war on God there's a war on truth and there's a war on Christianity. What he has is what I'm calling war two, but he, he references as the next event is six Kings versus the United States do a robbery. 
that's why the dollar value drops. Then we've got war versus the holy. That's what he calls it. And he specifies that the Pope and the Catholic powers are versus the holy. They're the ones who switch things and make the whole world say, hey, those people are wrong. Okay, so in the spiritual at this same time, the anointed return to help and they convert and they provide, protect and do miracles. God does his own. These are separate. Okay. And the anointed spread brightness. So we're going around spreading the gospel. Okay. He has those already dressed in white come to help and lead the people to God. I have the false Messiah ritual occurs, which I do believe might involve lanterns because of a dream I had. All must choose the false Messiah or God and the half-borns here in November. He has God's voice booms and they hear it's time to travel the narrow path. Then there's a great deception. There's a warning, a hand in the sky, much like the hand that wrote on the wall in the Old Testament and tells people to not believe the false. There are two angels that warn in the sky and then Mercy today for those who obey and terror is on the way for those who don't. So there's a big warning that goes out around, I believe, the same time as this half-borns here in November. It allows the White House to be bombed in November. And I know he and Kamala and some other people leave. They're allowing it to occur. But it's unclear whether this is at the beginning, the middle, or the end. I don't know where that sits. When you see that happen, you'll know where that sits. At the same time, we talked about there's a war on God, truth, and Christianity, right? We've got the lukewarm fight the true church. I've been given that. And I've been given Radio Jesus. He has, there's an earthquake in the American church. That means there's like a big disruption, right? The sky turns blood red, a huge warning, before the great war. What's the great war? Armageddon. So... Is there a time gap? Yeah. Jesus speaks to all. He testifies to who he is. He says there's no more mercy. He judges the church first. He will. He says he will return in glory and honor. He says hard days of suffering are on the way. Um, lightning appears in the sky and, the, and there is a fire in the sky. And the heavenly choir appears and sings. Okay. Now, he also has the lukewarm fight versus the true church with fury. They're sure they're right, okay? And God has power to protect all of his. That all goes in the same section. Then we've got a mystery. I'm not exactly sure. Then there's a second war. This is possibly World War III, okay? I do know that I got that Iran, the Iran war is after the half-borns turn. So that means it's either late November or December or a year later. I don't know. Okay. Now, this is what he refers to basically as the third war. It's eight kings and it's the U.S.'s final blow. The entire Arabian nation and Russia and other countries versus the U.S. Now, if you go back to the very first page here, I had there were Trump-related troubles, lights in the sky, human uprising, and then the U.S. invasion. The U.S. invasion kicks off seven years of war in the United States. So this event could happen any time in that time frame, okay? I was also told that all those events I just read to you, those are almost simultaneous. So they just seem like to go boom, 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 boom. And they start and they just go, 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 okay? Now, in the world, um, it says that I got that Putin rounds up the Christians, I put a yellow highlight there because I'm not exactly sure if that's November or December, what year that is, whatever, okay? But, and I'm not even sure if it's before or after War II, okay? I think it's before War II, but I don't know. He has that Russia, um, in an effort of unity, collects all the Christians and gathers them with intent to devour, okay? I'm saying that this fits with what I've been told about no hide law, uh, world government, and AI data collecting information from the human uprising and the false messiah's words that we're told not to be involved in and not to talk about, okay? Now, in the spiritual side, 
Christian's power is removed. Christians are jailed in November or December. That's what I was told. The holy and obedient that did not speak the false Messiah and were not in the human uprising are kept safe. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Then his side, he has Satan leads demons versus Christians. So the demons are obviously in the people who are going to be doing, making it illegal. Okay. The true Christians are spared harm. Christians huddle together in a group. Um, they are given a choice to fight Satan or if they are in fear or lukewarm, they stand on Satan's side. Satan tries to destroy those that fight against him. They are surrounded. The people who fight are surrounded by light and they use scripture and they win and they sing a unified song and the dark army retreats. Those who stay strong to the end get the crown of life. Then it says, and I'm not sure where to put this. It says, angry Satan massacres all of the lukewarm. It's unclear if that's within the tribulation or if that's prior to the tribulation. Okay. Now, I also have asteroids in December. He has asteroids fall. It's the last warning fire in the sky with asteroids. And then I have, there's no Christmas. Then I have um, the UN comes to help the US just before the rapture. I have all true Christians are home before Christmas. I have the earth. There's an earthquake while the kings are hiding from planned nukes. Um, as they launch the nukes, there's an earthquake that occurs and they're not spared. Okay. Then, so I'm going to call that section the earthquake and rapture. Okay. Because those are pretty close together when they occur. And then what happens right at the point of rapture is that deep, thick darkness where the demons get yuck. Right. So that begins the next section, which is the great tribulation in his system. That's still day two. All the testing and trials is day two. I've got thick darkness and demonic torture for the whole world. Okay. In the spiritual, deep, thick darkness, deeply wicked change in extreme ways. Remember, they get white hair, gold eyes, and they lose the ability to have any rhythm or hear music or sing or anything like that. Um, so then I've got people are all tortured by demons in darkness. He has at the same, same parallel information. There's days of darkness. There's thunder and lightning and earthquakes outside. It's very dark. People are screaming in darkness. All the blessings of the world turn to violent weather destructions, ice and hail. That is parallel with the nuclear winter. Those that are not holy, they chose the false Messiah, the lukewarm, those who loved man over the Bible, those who were mean to true Christians, etc. All of those stay for the tribulation. He has. The lukewarm and the disobedient suffer with the wicked and defiled. All that mocked, dishonored, and blasphemed, they hate God. Judgment of the world is after the church, and it comes with a blue flame. Because the church flame was just like a fire, and it was bad. But this is going to be a blue flame, so hotter, okay? Um, scroll, he was given scrolls. So scroll number one is wrath, punishments, diseases, torments, and trials. And in his scroll, it's so interesting because every person is named. And then it says exactly what kind of diseases, trials, and everything they have to go through. Roll, oh, and they cry out to God. The ears of the rebels are opened in January. The rebels cry out to God. The children are rescued first. The anointed and some of the obedient faithful are sent to rescue these people and take them to safe houses. There's a short time to save those who still have rhythm. They still have the ability to understand. They're not evil. Um, he has, at that, that's parallel, scroll number three, um, the names of those that their wrath will be complete before the devastation begins. So on scroll number three, there's a whole list of people. They have to be collected before the devastation. What's the devastation? That's the actual judgment. That's like the bad stuff. It's coming down the pike for the tribulation. There's going to be some stuff happening, bad weather and the demons and all of this stuff, but the massive judgments don't occur until the Antichrist takes the throne. Okay. Then we've got the mark of the beast will be soon after the rescues. 
The mark of the beast is final. No more conversions happen after that. He has God's full wrath begins. Okay. Now we go back over to the world side. The world side says the Antichrist goes to the throne in the fourth month. The abomination of desolation starts 10 days before Satan enters the Antichrist. The church is persecuted those same 10 days. Uh, then on the spiritual side, after the Antichrist comes in, the anointed are sent to take down evil. So they're going to set up their little world and their government. They're going to have all this really creepy, gross stuff going on. People will be living in societies. Like if you like to be a weirdo in a certain way, you'll live in that little society. And you like to be a weirdo in another way, you can live in that society. And they'll be rejoicing and happy in it. Look, we can be like this. So after this has occurred, we are going to come and take down evil, okay, off the earth before the end of the tribulation. Then um, Christ returns for Armageddon. Um, Satan, the false prophet, the false messiah, and the Antichrist are bound and put into the pit. Armageddon is with the kings and their armies versus Christ and his armies. So it's not really a competition, but it's going to occur. All right, so then... He has day three. I mean, it parallels to me with the thousand year reign. Okay. Okay. So I hope you find that super interesting. I find that super interesting. Um, what I have learned from this, besides being completely fascinated by God's amazing hand in all of this through time, through his chosen spokespeople, is that there's a clear purpose that the U.S. has to fall to be a huge precursor to allow the great tribulation to kick off. And those in full faith will be spoken to and kept safe through it. That is reiterated several times in Demetrius' stuff. The second is that I'm super grateful that I obeyed in blind faith. When I received words from him, I just wrote them down, gave them out to you, took the hits on the chin, you know, <laughs> whatever. And um, I struggled when I had to come up with that, like, wait, I'm, I'm putting out words from the Lord. Does that make me a prophet? What does that mean? Because I was so indoctrinated by man that that's not a thing. Okay, we can't we can't call ourselves that. We can't be that. And um, he asked me more than once to get on YouTube and put some videos, and I was like, mm, he asked me more than once. Now I have to do it. Like, <laughs> like that that's not kind of a neat idea. That's like a come on, let's go. And if I did not obey that initial call just to put up the first video, I would not have been faithful and and doing those videos and able to share some of the things that are coming. And I would not have been able to have this um, opportunity where God's been talking to me my whole life, but he's never talked to me about global events that need to be shared worldwide. And that's a very big shift for me. And it was a lot of changes for me. It was very refreshing for me to see another person who also had that same experience. Um, in the process, in the very beginning, before I started praying over the channel aggressively, I did see a lot of rude comments. And, um, you know, it's not very nice. And I do have to fight my real life. Like, my family thinks I'm insane. <laughs> not my family I live with. But, you know, my extended family. Because you don't, you don't hear from the Lord and, and put words out to people. You don't have dreams and then those are prophetic and they happen. That's that's not cool to them. So I've lost it to them. <laughs> so you take some hits when you do in faith what you need to do. And But if I didn't take the first steps, I wouldn't be down this road. And if I wasn't down this road, I wouldn't see the full hand of God in this process by being so much supported by the Cliff Notes version of what I got, right? Now, this is going to happen to you. It's going to be the um, human uprising and right before the bombs fall or right as the bombs fall or right after the bombs fall, whatever it is, you're going to hear from the Lord and you're going to have choices to make. Am I going to follow in faith right now? And then I'm going to have to follow in faith more and more and more and do weirder things. And some of the people around me are going to be like, eh, you've lost your mind. And you're going to know in your soul, no, I knew this was coming. This is right. And I'm going to stick with it. I am going to do what I have to do, even if it means you think I'm nuts. And you're going to have to stand strong. And you're also going to have to stand strong because people around you in the church, 
the government, other things are going to be like, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to do that. And you're going to have to be like, no, 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 no. I am going to do that. And what's going to happen to you is you're going to have all these amazing blessings. You're going to see the miracles and the provisions. I mean, I have been filled with so many miracles since I started this journey. I've had them on and off through my life, but not like this. This has been just like one after another, after another, after another. It's insane. And it's awesome. And this is going to happen for you too. If you're the ones who obey, do it in faith. You keep yourself out of it and you're just bringing fame to God. And you are acting in faith and sticking to the plan. Okay? Um, there are going to be people that are rude to you and mean to you. And even government people that are, you know, may, they might snatch you up if you didn't obey the words to stay silent on some things. Guess what? Forgive them. Be love. Be God's representative to them. God's keeping you safe. That's already been established. So you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, is something going to happen to me? You can just very peacefully be like, I forgive you. It's okay. And move on. Let God take care of it because he is going to take care of it. He's bringing judgment on the people. Especially if they come against you. Like, it's going to happen. Okay? So keep your eyes on the Lord and make him famous. And the last thing that I want to tell you is if you feel convicted to um, write down your dreams and your words and send them to me, I would love to read them. I may not send anything back like interpretation. So I'm going to leave the comments on temporarily until the Lord tells me to turn them off each video. And it'll just be shut off when he tells me to on each video. The video today under in the comments where it has like you can be saved by doing whatever, whatever. At the top, I will have my email, but that'll be removed when the comments get turned off. And I hope you have a great day.